Hello Internet, welcome to Games Done Wrongish. Hello Internet, welcome to the third episode of Game Pass or Play. This time around we are taking a look at Forza Horizon 4. As this game is a Microsoft Studio game, it arrived on Game Pass at launch, which means we get to get our hands on the game the same day as it releases worldwide. There was a few days early access available for those that pre-ordered it and bought the game with real purchase, but for Game Pass subscribers we got it on the release day. First up, for those that have played Forza Motorsport 7, they may be aware that that game was set at 4K60 for those with an Xbox One X. In this game however they cannot keep it at the 4K60 unfortunately. It makes sense because this is a huge open world game with lots of other races running around. You are in a kind of horizon life situation where there are other players on the on the screen and in your environment most of the time and obviously there's a good emphasis on playing uh, multiplayer and cooperative in this game so there had to be some cuts here and there so the 4k 60 is gone it's a 4k solid 30 frames per second or you can switch for performance which drops the resolution down to 1080 and targets 60 frames per second both options are great if you have the Xbox One X. Now, most of my footage here is captured from the box standard Xbox. I think that's the most fairest way to review these at the moment, but I am going to upgrade for the reviews um, purposes in the future, but just not yet. I need to get some 4K, uh, some 4K splitters, wires, cables, and things to allow me to do that. That's coming. That doesn't really matter right now. Once we step past the graphics, we get into the gameplay. Now the opening six, seven hours, quite a long time I know, but that's just the opening of the game to get you into a rise in life. And what happens in these six to seven hours is you need to qualify for showcases and seasons. How this works is you first have a certain amount of influence you need to gain. You gain this by taking part in races, whether they be cross country races, dirt races, sprints or midnight street races. Each race that you take part in, each event, will give you influence on the Horizon event. Influence allows you to get to reach these barriers, to be able to do the seasonal events and to be able to transition into the next season. Your first showcase is against the Hovercraft, which you will have seen on screen so far in this video. Once you have completed that, which is the Autumn event, you will then need to gain influence to reach the Winter season. The same thing happens again. You need to gain enough influence to get to the showcase, the showcase in the winter season is a race against the famous train, the Flying Scotsman. And once you've completed that, then you carry on to try and gain enough influence to move into the spring season and summer and so on. Once you've completed all four seasons, then you get into Horizon Life. Along with the showcases and the events that are going on, there are special sort of side missions, if you will, side quests, uh, such as stunt driver missions. In this you'll meet a stunt coordinator and he will have certain tasks for you to do so he'll need you to basically drive cars really fast, tear them up, tear up towns or jump over ramps, set the best times, do the craziest stunts and you've got 10 missions with this guy and each one will get crazier and crazier and have better cars and better rewards. All of this is to gain influence to get you through the four seasons and then into Horizon Life which is the main game proper. The problem is here once you get into the main game Horizon Life I feel you've done a lot of the fun stuff. There isn't that much stuff to do afterwards that I, I would consider fun. I mean, it's a great game besides that all the events in the game, all the different types of races are fantastic. If you like racing games, which I do, and I do love the Forza series, then it's got everything you're going to expect from a racing game. You're going to be able to continue to do the dirt races, the, uh, the cross-country races, the sprints, the midnight street races. You're going to be able to add on top of that drag racing and drifting. Not only this, but each season you open up seasonal objectives. These are week by week objectives. So each season lasts a week from Thursday to Thursday, basically. So a Thursday afternoon in the UK, the season will change. Right now we're in autumn. So on Thursday, the next Thursday will be winter, the next one spring, the next one summer and so on. And each season brings with it its own seasonal objectives. These will have a bunch of single player objectives a co-op objective in which is usually called the trial which you'll need to gather up with a few other players do the co-op objective it's not too bad when you drive over there you don't have to like personally pick players yourself or you don't have to pester people in the game to come and help you you drive over to this one and it'll tell you that the next event starts in say five minutes 
You can sign up for it and you can go for a little ride around whilst you're waiting. Just don't start any other event or else you won't join that one. When the event is about to start, you'll need to press X, I think it is on the screen. And then you'll be put in, you're waiting a, a, in a lobby for other players that are playing the game to join that event. And once you've got enough players, you'll go off and do it. There was one issue here with the seasonal objectives, and that is that one of them incorporates the James Bond DLC, which you do not get with Game Pass. So you feel like you're not quite getting the full experience because one of your seasonal objectives is to win a set of races in one of the James Bond cars. But because you don't have that car, you cannot take part in it. So it's a little, it's a little disappointing to see this uh, seasonal objective, this seasonal event on the map constantly and not being able to go there and just complete it. I would, I love to be able to complete everything on the map. Wherever it says new on the map, I want it not to. I want it to have a trophy next to it to show that I've completed it or a number of stars or whatever the reference is underneath it once you've completed it. I don't like having the new there and with the James Bond ones, with not having that DLC via Game Pass, I didn't buy it because I'm doing this as a Game Pass or play review. So I wanted to stick strictly to Game Pass and therefore I could not do that. I had this uh, one event on the map that was impossible to complete unless I bought that DLC. Again, with me doing it via Game Pass, I didn't buy the game, I'm doing this uh, just via the Game Pass subscription. So buying the DLC does seem a, little, seem a little counteractive as well because wouldn't I be better off buying the game first before the DLC? Because if I buy the DLC and then at some point they take this game out of Game Pass, they haven't really said whether the Microsoft games will be leaving Game Pass, but I'm going to assume that they will at some point. Because especially with games like this, they have a, a lot of licensing and a lot of um, copyrights, you know, in the music and the cars and things like that. So I'm not sure they'll be able to leave it in indefinitely. I do think that after a while, this game will leave Game Pass and then I'll just be left with a bunch of DLC and not the game. I'd have to buy the game eventually anyway. So because I'm trying to keep this strictly Game Pass, right now I cannot buy any DLC and I just have to play the game as it is. So I do feel left out with the James Bond stuff. I do wish that that was removed. If you did not have it, you didn't need to see it on the map. Fair enough, if you've gone off and you bought the DLC, then put it on the map so that I can take part. I don't like having something on the map that I can see and I cannot go and complete. My own issue there, I mean, I could just buy the DLC. I, I'm not against it. I think the game is definitely worth paying the extra for that DLC. I, especially with me getting it with my Game Pass subscription, I would spend the 10 euros or whatever it is on the cars and play it, but because of me doing a Game Pass review, I won't, not right now. Maybe later, once this is done. Uh, next up is car passes. Again, I didn't purchase any of these because you don't get these with Game Pass. So it looks like you're gonna be given a couple of cars each week. Whether they're any good or not, I don't know. I didn't I didn't feel the need to buy them. Just looking through them, I didn't think there was any cars there that I felt I needed to buy. I think I had a nice, decent bunch of cars already. I seem to have a car for every occasion. I had Subarus uh, and things like that, um, a Ford RS2000 for rally and things. I had my fast cars, my McLaren, my Ford GT for street races um, and sprints. And then I had my off-road cars. I had a, a Range Rover, which I really enjoyed driving around. I had my Land Rover Defender and I had um, some like beach buggy type, um, big Jeeps and th you know, big, big tires, like kind of, yeah, beach buggies, you know, semi-monster truck type of thing, but cars, I can't think of another word for them, but uh, beach buggy type. Off-road vehicles. Anyway, something for every occasion, which was cool to do. DLC aside, the way, the way the game continues is you keep leveling up through the different events. You have the street races, as I said, the midnight street races, you have the sprints, you have the dirt races, which is basically rally, and you have your off-road sections. As you compete in these events more and more, you level up via them. And generally when you get to around level eight or nine, you'll open up the main event for that type of race. So you have the Gauntlet, the Marathon, the Titan and the Colossus, huge name, big, big, uh, big races. Basically what these are is the, the main event for those types of races. Once you've, done, once you've reached level eight, nine or 10, you can go and take part in this race. Most races in each class would only last about three, four minutes or something like that. These are your juggernauts, these are your big ones, these are going to last 15, 20 minute races, something to get your teeth stuck into, they're going to take a while, be prepared, 
um, take a bathroom break before you jump into one of these and enjoy the ride. They are pretty fun uh, and they do last quite, quite a bit longer than the usual races. Once you've done that though, that's pretty much it. You just rinse and repeat in different cars, but the different seasons do make a change. I was riding around in summer when I first started playing the game, it was summer. Um, I started last Tuesday and by then on Thursday it switched to autumn. So I got to have a good feel of how that was. I played a couple of days in the summer and you could race around the streets in my McLaren, my GT, have no issues. Once it came to autumn, I switched it up and started to use rally cars instead more than the supercars. So I was mainly, just to get to events and things, I was mainly using the Subarus and the um, Ford RS2000 things like that just because the leaves on the road and the rain and things like that don't they do make a big difference they they do uh, cause a lot of issues with traction so if you have a, those rally cars you you're going to stay on the road much longer you're going to be able to get to your destination it's not too bad if you can get used to the supercars and if you um, upgrade them yourself to make their stability and their handling better they can stick to the roads in autumn as well it just if you if you haven't got the credits at the start of the game and you want to just switch switch to a rally car you're probably going to stay on the road much easier in those seasons in winter you're going to have to change again to like a, a, a bigger more off-road vehicle more often than not because the cars even the rally cars will slide around in the snow i haven't reached that season yet that's next week but i have tried it in the build-up to the game where you go through the four seasons you get a little taste of each one in the first six seven hours whilst you're doing you know the experience to get through the showcases and the seasons so you do get a taste of everything in those first six seven hours but once you get into the game proper you're stuck with a certain season for a week and then every week it will change i did experience a, a few bugs here and there mainly with the car vanishing i'm currently playing on my original xbox so this xbox um, was released in 2013 it is the original one in which i'm doing these reviews on um, I do have an Xbox One X, but that's downstairs. It's not hooked to my computer, my capture card. So I don't generally do much recording from that one. I, sometimes I do on uh, the USB drive and then I put them in the PC. But uh, most of my recording, most of my capture is done on the original Xbox, which is hooked up to my PC in this room. So I do feel that it's the age of the system that's causing the issue, that it's getting a bit slow. So sometimes you'll come out of a menu and you're just be sat in midair with no car around you it seems now i thought that was just because me transitioning through the menus too quickly and then coming out and i just didn't have the time to load the car but then all of a sudden i was driving this lotus down the road and on one corner the car just vanished and i was just like sat there with no car around me and then all of a sudden it came back again i'm not sure what caused that i did notice uh, in certain points if you crash and you're basically stuck in a wall with trees around you the car will vanish so you can see where you're going another bug i found not really a bug just a placement issue i guess i'd completed an event and it loaded me back in the world but it loaded me on a tram track and i was inside a tram at the start which doesn't really make sense i would say it kind of breaks the immersion but not really because you're in and out of that many systems and menus you're not that immersed once you're in an event and you're racing yes you can get very immersed especially in this game um in the forza games what I really love about the Forza games is the fact that you have the line in front of you in the game. You can turn that off if you like, but the, the line assist and tell you which line you should take around the corners is something I like to leave on. And the main reason I like to do that is because in so many games, you have a little map in the bottom corner. So in this game you have in the bottom left, you have your map. Now, if I didn't have the line on, I'd be looking down at the map all the time, constantly over and over, taking my eyes off the road, to take a look when the next corner was coming when it was coming up with the line on you don't have to do that you could see when the line starts to go yellow or red there's going to be a corner sure you can have a quick glance at the map if you want to, just to see how severe that corner might be but you don't really need to you can kind of tell just by looking at the at the, at the road so i prefer that it keeps me more immersed I'm, I'm looking at where i'm going i'm looking at what's around me i'm looking at the other cars on the track i'm not spending my time looking at the minimap which so many games expect you to do these days and that's what i really like about this it's also what i really like about the dirt games what used to be colin mcgray rally but now the dirt the codemasters one or oh, any kind of rally game I, I suppose in which you have a co-pilot which is telling you you know easy left or herpin right and things like that just before you get there those kind of games keep me immersed as well i don't have to be looking at the map to see what kind of corner's coming next 
I don't need to do that and I don't need to take my eyes off the road. I don't need to think about anything else other than my driving. That's brilliant. I think this racing line does that for me and I think in rally games the co-pilot does that. It keeps you immersed, it keeps you uh, enjoying the game and I really, really like that. If you prefer to take it off and just wing it yourself, but, uh, th that's up to you if you prefer it that way. But I do feel you'll be looking at the map a lot more often and it takes, your, it takes you out of the game a little bit when you have to look at a map. Anyway, moving on. As I've said, basically that is your main gameplay loop. So all you do, you're doing then after that is just grinding influence. And you're completing these races again, but you can do it with different cards, the different seasons. And you can also take part in player created levels as well, which start at the same start point as the ones you've been doing. But you choose a player created track and race that instead of the uh, Forza initial ones. Other than that, you have other little side quests, if you will, in which you need to get the fastest speed you can through speed cameras or speed zones in which you have a start and end point and it's the overall speed between the two points. There are boards that you can collect which give you influence or you can collect um, fast travel boards. And if you collect all of the fast travel boards, then it will, won't cost you any more credits to fast travel from one point to another. I have to say I've never used fast travel. I actually quite enjoy driving from one place to another. You get to unlock roads that you may not have been down. You get to see the countryside and the, the world that they've created. And I just much prefer to do that. If I, I feel if I was fast traveling all the time, I'd miss out on a lot of things. Don't forget the boards I'm talking about and the speed cameras that you're going past. You just have a chance to go and collect them whilst driving from point to point. So fast traveling seems a bit pointless to me. Once I've done everything, once I've done every speed camera, every speed zone, collected every board in the game, things like that, then fine. Having a fast travel is okay because I've unlocked everything. I've unlocked every uh, road. I've done all of the things. And I feel then I'll be okay to just uh, fast travel from place to place. But that will come anyway. That will, Because if I'm going to do everything in the game, if I'm going to complete all the achievements, then it's just going to happen anyway, isn't it? So we'll, we'll get to that <laughs> when we get there. On top of all of those features, you have other side missions. We talked about the stunt driver missions earlier, but once you reach Horizon Life, even more open up. So you have a business that you can help out, World Fastest Rentals. So the idea is in Edinburgh, which is the main city of the game, you're going to have a, a World Fastest Rentals dealer that's going to rent out supercars to the rich and famous, I guess. And they want you to test the cars and basically showcase them so that they have footage of you driving these cars really fast around and they can entice their punters to rent these cars off them for probably quite a lot of money you get a cut of this what if you do it if you complete all 10 uh, missions in that you will get a cut of the rentals each week uh, basically every time you log out and log back in i've noticed i'm getting around 9,000 credits each time i don't know if it's set at that or it's just that i'm generally logging in every 12 hours or something like that Maybe not 12 hours, but 12 to 18 hours. Maybe once a day you get 9,000. I don't know, I've been logging in every sing single day since the game released. So I'd have to take a couple of days off to see if I got more than 9,000. But generally every time I log in from that one business, I get 9,500 credits, something like that. Another side mission you have is Laresa. Laresa is basically a YouTuber, a streamer, who is wanting you to race cars like the older video games, like if, um, like Project Gotham Racing, like Outrun, things like that. So she chooses a car and a track that would suit that game. Let's say it's Outrun, you're going to be driving around real fast in a Ferrari or something, a red Ferrari, and, and yeah, you need to reach from point A to point B in a certain time, like a time zone. There are rally missions as well, which uh, she states are a take on Sega Rally, things like that. So that could be quite fun. It wasn't my favourite one of the of the bunch, but it, but it's there and it's available. You've got barn finds as well. We can search the countryside for cars left behind in barns, like the P50, for instance. The P50 was a lot of fun. There is an achievement wrap behind this one, which you have to win a race in the P50. Now, if any of you are fans of Top Gear, you may have seen them drive this car around in Top Gear. Well, I say drive it, they basically just rolled it over a few times. Every time they took a corner, the car just fell over. Uh, but it was funny, and they were using it to go inside uh, the offices and things of the BBC, I think, in, in, in the episode that I'm thinking of. Uh, anyway, in this you have to race it. So I got mine and I pimped it up like a P50 Batmobile. 
and I went and had a race, uh, to a few races until I actually won one. You do get bullied quite a bit by some huge Jaguars. Well, I did anyway well, during my race. Um, but if you persevere, you can win and you can get the achievement, which was pretty cool. On top of this, there's PvP and co-op. PvP is as it sounds, player versus player. It's your basic 1v1 or more. Basically, someone will set up a, an event and they will invite everybody on that server to join. You can press the left bumper button to join if you like, or you can ignore it. Once there's two people in it or more, it will start a countdown and then the race will begin. And whoever wins, wins. You get you get experience uh, influence either way, no matter where you finish. Obviously more for finishing first and a little less for each position after that. But yeah, it's kind of fun. On top of that is the co-op though. This is really fun. In this mode, there is up to six players against six driver tiles, which the AI controlled um, versions of other players that play the game. Could be people from your friends list or friends of some of the other people in the race already in the co-op team in the uh, player side. So generally, let's say the players are the blue team and the driver tiles are the red team. The way it works is each one of you has to try and beat as many of the driver tiles as you can. But each driver tile that you beat in the race, you'll get 100 points. So if there's six V6, if you come out on top of all of the driver tiles, so let's say you get first position, you're going to get 600 points. I think you actually get an extra 50 for coming first as well, so you get 650 points. And then the next person down, if it's another one of your team, they will have beaten everyone. So they, if they beat all the driver tiles too, they could get 600, but they won't get the 50. And then let's say um, one of the driver tiles coming next, and then another player, the next player will only get 500 because they only beat five driver tiles, and so on and so on. It's really cool how they've done it. Um, we, ha we have lost uh, an event now and then as well, because if you've ever played a Fox game before, you'll know that when, you, when you're playing solo, you can press Y and you can rewind time a little bit so that you can try that corner again or try not to slide off. But whereas in co-op or in, in PvP, you still have the functionality of pressing Y, but it doesn't rewind everybody. It just basically sets you back on the track a little bit and everybody's still going at full pelt. So you're going to end up way behind and you're going to have to try and make that up. So basically you're hoping that the rest of the pack also slide off at some point and either press Y to reset themselves or just spend time trying to get back on the track so that you can catch up. It doesn't always work because, you know, these driver tiles are AI controlled and they're kind of rubber banded as well. So if you have one player in your team that is really good and doesn't crash or slide or anything, just does the track in a perfect time, the driver tiles will be rubber, rubber banded behind them. So they'll pretty much do it perfectly too, but just a few seconds off, like five seconds off maybe if they're really good. But that means they've all taken a good lead over you and you won't catch up. So your team can lose because this one player has dragged all of the driver tiles, basically rubber banded them past the finish line whilst you guys have all fallen off so that they win, they get their 600 points, but next up, um, the driver tiles get 500 points, then another 500 points, another 500 points. And by the time you get there, you might only get 100 points or something like that. So in the overall end, uh, in the overall score at the end, the driver tiles earn more points than the players. So it's interesting. It's a really fun mode, to be honest. I quite enjoyed playing through that. So the game has 55 achievements to collect for your 1000G. A lot of these are kind of accumulative. You'll get them uh, in the end. So I haven't got them all myself yet and that's because, for instance, there's one achievement that uh, requires you to reach level 200. I am over level 100 at the moment, but 200 is, uh, well, it's double what I've done already and I've played a lot. I've played for like a week non-stop right now, seven days, but no, six days. I played from Tuesday till Sunday, non-stop every single day, some in the morning, some in the evening, and played it as much as I could. I reached one level 100, which means I've got all that again to go to reach level 200. But at the same time, there are achievements for finding every road in the game. There are achievements for finding every smashable board in the, in the game. Um, achievements for going through all of the speed traps, the speed zones. All of that, so it will all come eventually as you're gaining your influence and your levels um, to reach 200, you'll start to unlock all the other achievements too that come along with those. Even your main events, so in Drift and Drag and 
uh, sprint and street races all of those require you to reach level 10 so you can be doing those whilst gaining your influence to get your influence up to level 200 and all the achievements will all start to unlock as you go along there are pvp and co-op achievements as well but again as i explained earlier with those systems they are quite fun to jump in and whenever you see uh, an available event pop up on the screen it will say press lb and you can join it do it i suggest doing it just to rack up those achievements if you are an achievement hunter if you're not bothered about the achievements then that's fine but uh, this is the achievement section so if you're going for that um yeah press the lb join the co-op join the pvp races as often as you can because you'll be surprised that in a game that has so many players and there are a lot of people playing this game at the moment you'll be surprised just how many of them are just concentrating on the solo uh, aspect of the game and just gaining their influence and just doing the showcases and the races and they're not bothered about the pvp or the co-op you could go to a race and, and choose to play in co-op or pvp and it will try to pair you up with other players and a lot of the time it will just say fail to find other players you won't start a co-op or pvp race so my suggestion is do them as soon as they pop up as soon as you see them uh, press lb to join do it because you you'll get those achievements done then obviously if you're busy if you're on a way to a showcase that you're really looking forward to do then do the showcase that's fine <laughs> and then try to do one later on but if you can if you're just doing speed traps and things like that and one pops up press that lb join the game and and crack on with those achievements now overall um my thoughts on the game is this game is brilliant i mean i really love the showcases especially the halo themed one this was a lot of fun to be able to jump in a warthog drive around the beach with uh, cortana in your ear and and banshees flying around the place oh it was so good it made you feel like halo if you like halo you like forts so this was a, this was a really good matchup a lot of fun um yes the showcases are really good fun the races are good fun the systems in forza make the racing so enjoyable anyway and this game would have got a 10 out of 10 from me if it wasn't for the slight little bugs with the card disappearing and the dlc the, the dlc was a little bit off-putting as i mentioned earlier the james bond dlc races that you cannot do without having that dlc that is the one thing that's stopping me from giving it 10 out of 10 because it is the one thing that irks me throughout it just it just niggled at me and now it's not an issue of the game if i purchased the game if i pre-ordered the game and i got the james bond dlc i would be giving it a 10 out of 10 for sure but this is a game pass or play review and because it's game pass and because you don't get the james bond dlc with game pass it is it does feel like you're missing a part of the game it feels like you're not quite getting the full experience so because of that i bring it down but i'm still giving it a 9 out of 10 it's absolutely fantastic if you've got game pass uh this is a gameplay there's definitely a gameplay go play it have a lot of fun i would recommend after a little while perhaps using spotify to play in the background rather than the radio stations because they do get repetitive and a little bit annoying after a while unfortunately in this game they don't have your custom radio station like they used to have you used to be able to use groove or uh, back in the older xbox days you used to be able to rip a cd to your your hard drive and play that as a custom radio station um but in this one it doesn't have that but you can use it spotify and basically turn off the radio in the game uh, stick spotify on get your balance right of music and game sound and just listen to your own music whilst playing it does make it a little bit more relaxing a little bit more fun and will give you the urge to keep on playing past your maybe your normal cutoff point if you wasn't able to do that but uh, yeah fantastic game definitely worth a play thumbs up from me and i'll see you next time bye bye if you like this video please consider watching another two suggestions will be on screen now also if you have not subscribed already please do so by clicking the icon in the middle of this screen every view and subscription will go a long way to helping the channel grow and in turn will result in more content for you thank you and until the next time Goodbye.